Good Monday morning. I am MPJ and you are watching Fun Fun Function. The title of this week's video is Settings are Evil. This has been nagging me a lot lately. I really think that settings are a scourge in software development and I want to talk about the costs and problems with having them. What are settings? What, what, what kind of setting is, um, am I talking about? Basically, I'm talking about having a setting screen with toggles in it. You know, like, on, off. All software has some kind of configuration. For instance, like, imagine this set setting screen here. There is a name, my name is there. And then there is a time zone uh, and well, like pick suite. Now, there's no problem with this. This is not what I'm talking about. Most software needs some kind of configuration like this. You know, at least if it's a social software that at some point shows time. You could perhaps do away with the time zone and detect it, but it would still vary per person. It would just be configured on an operating system level instead. No, the evil that I am about to talk about is stuff like this. Adding a toggle for something like auto-playing videos. This is a horrible drawing of a... So this is necessary probably and this is evil. The difference between these two categories of, of, of settings or configuration or whatever you like to call it is that this will give the user a different path through the application. These are just kind of variables that all users have. It just displays a different name for each user in the uh, in, in, in the templates, in the views. But this toggle does a bit more. It creates like a divergent path inside of the application where the uh, users will have different experiences depending on what their setting is set to. And these are poison in software development. I'm gonna talk about why. Why are settings like this evil? Because they add a combinatorial explosion of test cases. What? What does that even mean? I'm going to talk about the combinatorial explosion things, but first I want to talk a little bit about why people add these features in the first place. Settings are added when a team is unable to make a product decision. For example, the, uh, the, the uh, autoplay video settings is uh, a setting that exists in the Twitter settings. So autoplaying videos is something that uh, Vine started, the, the, the uh, video app Vine started, started doing a couple of years ago and it got uh, amazing uh, results from that. So everybody started doing that. Instagram, Facebook and then Twitter uh, also realized, oh shit, we need to do this too. So they did. But autoplaying videos is also very annoying. So a lot of users will complain, it will be a lot of negative press, there will be a lot of negative customer service. But even with all those uh, complaining people, it's clear that you still want to do it because it, it is amazing for engagement, it is amazing for the number of plays, and it was amazing for just ad revenue. It made sense for Twitter to do it. So they added this, a toggle inside of the settings screen, where you can just turn the autoplaying videos off if you or annoyed by them. Everybody happy or... No! Combinatorial explosion of test case! Ah! When you are developing software, there are a number of things that can go wrong. When you are uh, developing it and maintaining it and then adding new features and, you know, as time passes. So as you develop, there are more and more test cases that you need to check every time you uh, make a change. You might be testing these test cases more or less formally, uh, but in the end somebody has to go through them. You have to check that you uh, can create an order in the system and that you can pay it and la 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 la. And given that you get a charge back, this happens and did it. Basically you're checking if the things that could go wrong are, are, are not going wrong. And as you're developing you're gonna get more and more of these test cases. Test cases is basically the amount of things that you need to check every time you release your software. You can theoretically make perfect software. Let's say that you create a small little NPM module that just does a very certain thing with a string, such as left padding it with zeros or something. There aren't really any bugs in that implementation. It is, uh, it is pretty much perfect because it does so little. In real software, uh, the amount of test cases go up 
and some of them are just gonna break from time to time. And that's okay, that's something that we uh, accept because we, we want speed and we want features and we want growth. We don't really need perfect software, it's okay that it breaks from time to time, but we still want to keep the test cases down because the more things that can go wrong, will go wrong. So if we can get away with simpler software with fewer test cases, we should. And this is the reason why adding a feature toggle to your application is so sinister, because it adds a combinatorial explosion of test cases. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you have uh, a feature, some functionality, a view or something in your application, and it's not the most complicated view. Uh, you have been developing it for a couple of months. Uh, let's say that it has 40 test cases, 40 pieces of individual functionality that you want to make sure works every time you release. Now, let's say that this piece of functionality has uh, three toggles that affects how it functions. It might be a list of tweets where you can have autoplay videos on or off. It might be a list where you want to show or hide items that have been deleted in it. And it might be like the size of the items, if they're compact or if they have a bit of more clean space. Can be anything. Now, because you've added those settings, uh, the number of test cases that you need to check on your feature in order to make sure that it works properly with all of the combinations are 40 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 320 test cases. And in reality, a piece of functionality will have way more things that can go wrong than just 40. In real software development, these numbers don't end up on 320, they end up being astronomical. So if you have manual testers, they need to uh, depend on some kind of weird gut feel about the application and what things tend to go wrong. And the problem with setting is because of these growth curves, uh, they are not linear, uh, they are exponential, so they, they will just keep growing, 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 growing like this. They don't grow like this. So you can't solve it with automated testing and hundreds and hundreds of computers running your tests for you because the numbers become so huge that you cannot possibly test them all, even with an, like, an entire cluster of computers. You have simply made your software too complicated to test. And if you have made your software too complicated to test, you have made it too complicated to maintain quality. Okay, but let's think about the other side of the coin. What about the users, the annoyed users that want to turn off the autoplayed videos? This is a real problem. We're, we're not making this problem up. This, this setting, uh, it exists for, for, it has motivation behind it. It's so that we can tell uh, customer service and, uh, and the media that, well, we're autoplaying videos now, but you have an option to turn it off. It's okay. The problem with that is that you are, it's just an illusion of giving users what they want. Because studies show that 95% of users never change settings. Now this is gonna vary depending on your, uh, how, how computer people, uh, your user base is. But in general, the vast, vast, vast majority will never touch the settings of a piece of software. And this 95% figure, this means that in reality, when you add a toggle, like the uh, autoplay videos toggle, or any toggle, the thing that you make the default, you might as well have just made it the only option. Because that's the experience that your users are going to have, except for a very small minority. You have not really solved the problem, because users won't make a choice. And I know what you're thinking, there is 5% here that will make the choice. Shouldn't we do it for them? And yes, we totally should if it wasn't for the combinatorial explosion of test cases. The cost of this is not worth it for just 5% of the users. A small minority of those people will leave, but the vast majority of them will get used to the new feature. And don't fall into the trap that, oh, 
it won't affect my app so much if I just add this setting. Because settings is one of those death by a thousand tiny cuts kind of things. No single toggle that you add is going to take, <laughs> slow your development down to a crawl, but all the uh, minute little toggles that you add over time will. Have a look at this. This is the Twitter settings interface. And just have a look at this. They have like, this is so much stuff that you can change. It's crazy. We have email notifications, notifications, and web notifications. Let's check this tab. Okay, security and privacy, there's a lot of, uh, like, I'm not saying that these options are useless. They, they are there for a reason, but they all add a little bit of this combinatorial explosion. And this, this is so many things that, like, this is completely impossible to test. There are things here that they could have done away with by not procrastinating on a product decision and making a proper product decision with some spine instead of these half-baked things where you kind of have the illusion that you're giving users the choice but not really because nobody accesses settings. Like this one, send, receive, read receipts. Yes, I can totally understand why there are some users that don't want uh, other users to see when they have read the messages because that is kind of annoying but Facebook Messenger does not have this setting there is no option to turn the read me uh, uh, receipts on and off and you know what it is one of the most popular most successful <laughs> messengers in the world they didn't need it they didn't need it to survive you could just have skipped this you could just have made a proper <laughs> product decision just just have some just have the courage to believe in your product that you're making the right call and if it doesn't turn out to be the right call roll the feature back don't half bake it with settings and this one here this is also one of those where twitter kind of believed in their product but not enough to not add a setting to turn it off which is this show me the best tweets first. Twitter sort of kind of want to move to an algorithm based feed but they also know that this will t piss users off so they have to be very careful about it. If you want to make a product decision do the product decision. They want to go in the water the first uh, first dip of the, the summer uh, but they, they are kind of afraid oh it's cold and they're dipping their toe in. I don't know Jump or get off the pot or I don't know exactly what the saying is. And I'm making fun of Twitter here, but I know that this is hard. This is hard. That is why these settings arise. It is hard to jump in. Perhaps the best argument is to just... Okay. It is hard to jump in, but your competitors are. These half-assed decisions, they're not helping anyone. For In Twitter's case, I think there's no setting to autoplay videos in the Facebook newsfeed. They're just autoplaying videos. And as, a, as an example, they are massively successful from it. And Twitter knows it. This setting here, this video autoplay, this is not here to help users. It's there because Twitter had fear. And because of that fear, they were unable to make a product decision, a proper product decision. And some of you might be thinking that hmm, this sounds like a designer product owner uh, decision and this is a programming channel. What does that have to do with me? I'm just a programmer. Well, it is because it is your responsibility as a software developer to inform product owners and designers about this problem. This combinatorial explosion of test cases, it is not completely obvious. When you're adding it, uh, it feels like you've solved the problem. It seems good. It seems like a good thing you've added here. The big cost that these things have, or rather the habit of adding these things, uh, is not completely obvious. And it, it's, it's very subtle and it, even if you know about it, it feels like it's way down the line and, and probably someone else's problems. Maybe the software developer that uh, is employed after you've left the organization. Toggles, sinister as hell. Okay, so to summarize this rant, settings are evil. Some evil, 
is necessary, but it is your responsibility as a software developer to make sure that the people that are responsible for the design uh, to understand that this combinatorial explosion of test cases exists and as a result they will get the futures that they want in the in the future that they will get them slower because the speed of your software development efforts will slow down if you don't explain this concept to product or your your leads or designers who or whomever is leading your development effort uh, they have no way of of making the proper prioritization they need to know the cost of this thing might still be worth to do it but it might also be oh yeah okay yeah if we have to get those problems yeah then maybe we can just design it away or maybe just make the default case the only case that's my rant add settings slowly because they're evil do you agree disagree do you think i am a hyperbolic git which i am by the way i felt like it today either way please write a comment down below i like to read your thoughts on my thoughts you have watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. I release these every Monday morning 0800 GMT. Some episodes are like this one, musings, where I talk about the process of software development, while some are a bit more fun and practical, where I code an editor. I am MPJ. Until next Monday morning, stay tuned.